Welcome back guys. What you're looking at here is a flash cart for the Nintendo 64. If you're not aware, a flash cart allows us to play our games via SD card on the cartridge through our original hardware. So we could play original release games, prototypes, hacks, homebrews, different regions games, so on and so forth. We've covered a lot to do with different versions of flash carts for different systems on this channel. And I think it's a very neat thing that really opens it up for people who want to play on original hardware. Definitely not for everyone, but still an interesting product nonetheless. Now, what we're looking at right here is the EverDrive 64 V3. This version is currently discontinued due to end of life components, meaning it uses components that are either not available anymore or are becoming a lot harder to obtain. So this version has been replaced with the EverDrive 64X7 from Crix. Here we go. So we're gonna be talking about some differences here, checking it out, seeing what this thing does. But first up, some of the minor differences between the two, with this being a replacement for the V3, it doesn't have a lot of new stuff going on for it. It does have a few quality of life improvements and that is definitely neat. If you already have a V3, I definitely would not go out and buy an X7. If you have a V2 and you're looking to upgrade or you're just looking at flash carts in general, definitely take a look at the X7. So one of the biggest things that has changed between the two is gonna be cosmetic, the case. Direct from Crix, the, the X7 does use a higher quality case, better labels, all that kind of good stuff. Not major, but it's something worth pointing out. As you can see, this has the EverDrive logo embossed on the back, whereas the previous version did not. So that's one minor thing. We're gonna go ahead and open up both of these and take a look at the internals. But one of the first things you've probably noticed is the V3 use normal SD cards from the top. And on the X7, we do use micro SD cards on the side. So that is one change. Now, talking about the features specifically to the X7, we do have PAL and NTSC region free features with this, can be used on any system, doesn't matter. Uh, one of the other improvements was the Ultra CIC3. So this now has the new version of the chip with auto region detection. So the CIC chip is essentially a lockout chip that Nintendo would use for anti-piracy, uh, region lockout, so on and so forth. And this does use the newest version of that CIC chip. So one of the things that I had heard from Crix Direct was with the previous versions, uh, we'll take a look when I open this in a second, but there's a switch up top that you could select if this is PAL or NTSC. You don't have to do this with this one anymore. It just auto detects. A lot of people would have issues where this would be set to PAL and they would have an NTSC system and the cartridge would not work and they were sending out support requests trying to figure out what's going on. And that typically always was the switch was in the wrong position. Um, their EverDrive wasn't faulty. It was just that simple thing. So that is one thing people do not have to worry about with this version anymore. It just auto detects. So the other things that we got going on that are pretty much similar to the V3 is we do have fast loading, 23 megabytes per second. We do have an NES emulator built in, game pack save support, game shark cheat saves or cheat code support, uh, IPS, APS auto patching, which is really cool. I'll showcase that in a moment. It can be used for anti-aliasing patches for your Nintendo 64 games with some you know, pretty cool results depending on the game. So that is definitely a welcome feature um, if you haven't used one of these versions before. One of the other things I wanna point out as well is both of these versions do have a USB port on the side. The V3 had this, the I can't remember what that version's called, but this uses micro USB. Uh, those ports were only for development purposes. So if you had a V2, or version 2.5, they did not have that USB port. The only thing it's for is for, you know, if you're developing games and whatnot, I think the vast majority of people are not gonna utilize that port. So it's not necessarily a big deal, but something worth pointing out, they did change that with the X7 version. 
So there is that. Now, the next thing we need to do is simply just open these up and take a look. And then after that, we're gonna pop this bad boy in and take a look at the brand new menu and see some of the features of this flash cart. So let's open up the V3 first. This version, it just used normal uh, Phillips head screws, whereas the X7 uses like some kind of Torx security screws. I'm not sure what they're called, but I do have a bit for those. So no issue getting into that guy. So just to take a quick look at the internals here, there's the inside of the V3. And as you see at the top, we do have that NTSC PAL switch. Uh, we do have a built-in uh, battery holder. That's for uh, the save RAM, which one of the big differences between this version, um, including the X7 versus the V2, is that this has just automatic saving, uh, whereas the V2 or the V2.5, you would have to reset your system uh, to save your game files. Some people are fine with that. That's like the major difference. Um, and also the V3 and the X7 has a real-time clock built into it, so you could play Animal Crossing if you so choose. Not a big feature many people will utilize, but it is a nice one if you're looking for the highest compatibility as possible. But as you see here, on this version, the V3, we do have an Altera Cyc uh, Cyclone uh, 2 FPGA powering this board. Pretty nice stuff. So give you a good little look at what we got going on here. Uh, the Altera Max 2 down there. And then on the back, there's not gonna be much of anything going on, but might as well showcase that. EverDrive 64 version 3.06. So some markings there, some uh, other little things going on back there, but there is that one. So let's take a look at what has changed with the X7. Said I do have to swap to a different bit. There we go. Let's open this guy up. Try to give you a nice little look at what we got going on there. So this one, we do have an Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA powering this thing up. So that's gonna be one of the main differences. The V3 had a Cyclone 2, this is using a Cyclone 4. Pretty cool stuff. We still have the uh, battery holder, easily replaceable if need be. We no longer have that power NTSC switch because it does it automatically. And it's a black uh, PCB. I always like the black boards. I mean, it's just an aesthetic, but it still looks pretty neat. You'll never notice it if you don't open this thing up. And then here's the back of the board. Not as populated as the V3 with the... Uh, all the little stuff back there. But there we go. Nice looking board. Give you a little side by side in a second here, but there is everything. So next up, um, we are gonna go ahead and put this back together. I'll do that off camera. We're gonna pop it into the Nintendo 64, take a look at the new menu, see some of the things we could do, and just check that all out. So let's go ahead and peep it out. Okay guys, so we've got the EverDrive 64 X7 powered up and ready to go. We've got the brand new background going, new menu, all that good stuff. We're using a new OS for this device. So we're gonna go through a few things real quick. But I do wanna point out, if you're not in the know, no, these do not ship with games. You have to supply your own ROMs. I am using the Smoke Monster EverDrive pack for the Nintendo 64 with a few things added. Um, but you do have to supply your own, so keep that in mind. So the one thing I do want to point out real quick, um, when you set up your, your SD card, your micro SD card, in this case for the X7, um, you will have on the root of your card an ED64 folder. So in that folder, you'll have another folder, Auto. That's where you're going to put all your patches. So that's the one thing I talked about earlier was the anti-aliasing patches that you can use for your games, which is an awesome feature. I have all of them listed here that are currently available. Very easy to find and load up onto your EverDrive. Um, as long as the game name matches and you have the auto IPS patching going, it'll just automatically apply it. You can do it individually if you so choose as well, but it's cool. I mean, nice feature. Doesn't just have to do with, you know, the anti-aliasing patching. Can be used for different IPS and APS patches, but I think that's one of the main features people will like to use because before you would have to use like game shark codes to 
to get those patches going essentially or in a different you know way and you know putting in long ass game shark codes kind of sucks but here we go so let's take a look at what we got going on here we're going to take a look at this nes emulator in a moment as well but if you hit the z button you get your main menu options for the x7 so let's take a look at what's available in here so in options we do have a few options right background you could turn that on and off cheats on and off uh, the automatic patcher for IPS and APS patches on and off, CRC check on and off, hide system directory on and off, real-time clock setup so you can put in the date, uh, the time, all that good stuff to match what you want it to be. If you want it to match currently what everything is, you do have to do that to make sure you have the current time. Um, and then information will give you more information for each of the options, uh, a more in-depth look at how everything works. So that's really cool that that is included explains how the saving system works, the file menu. Uh, you can add different wallpapers that are 320 by 240, max 150 kilobytes. Really cool that we have that. But yeah, nice that it goes in depth and explains a lot of things there if you wanna take a look at that. Recently played, if you click that, it'll just list the games that you've recently played. That way you can have quick access to that. Um, random game, just like it says, boom, hit it. It's gonna select a random game for you to play. Now, another feature, we have cheats. It's currently grayed out because we don't have a game selected. Um, we'll look at that in a second. CPAC Manager, this is a really cool feature as well. So Controller Pack Manager, that's your memory pack that you have in your controller. You can back up the files from that to the SD card on your EverDrive and then sync it with the game if you want. So you can add a file that you have, sync it with the game, all sorts of cool stuff there. Information gives you more info on how all that works. Definitely a very nice feature to have. Um, device info. This is going to be useful in checking what OS version you're currently on. Because sometimes, you know, there's there's updates that go out and you kind of lose track. You can go in here, double check. Okay, yeah, I'm on the most current one. Or, oh, you know what? There's a, newest, a newer version that doesn't match what I have. And then go ahead and add it. So very nice. Um, just explains a few other things there. When it was assembled. Uh, power counter, which I'm assuming is how many times you've powered it on, how many games you've played. Uh, if you really need to know that stuff, it's there. Diagnostics will just diagnose, give you the diagnostics of the, the cartridge, all the chips and everything. It'll go through and make sure everything is good. We're not going to do that because it does take a moment. But if you have to diagnose issues, which you shouldn't have a problem. I've never had a problem with any of these EverDrives. Uh, that's where you would go about doing it. About just gives you some control information. Developed by Igor, of course. Support at cricks.com. There you go. Made in the Ukraine. Proudly, right? That's what I'm talking about. So there is all that. Let's take a look at the NES emulator. So the one thing you will notice, uh, we'll go ahead and select a game like Super Mario Brothers. I don't really care for playing uh, NES games on the Nintendo 64. It's kind of wonky in my opinion. But you will notice that cheats are grayed out, so we do not have access to cheats for NES games. But let's go ahead and select and start this. And it loads up pretty quick. Now, if we hit the L and R button, that's where some of our options are for this emulator. So there is that. Um, it, it's, it's cool that it's on here. I mean, I don't really care too much to play NES games on the Nintendo 64. But if you do, I mean, you have that option. Uh, doesn't look too bad and it plays fairly well but yeah, the controls feel a little loose using a nintendo 64 controller it just doesn't feel natural to me so not really something i will utilize but it's still a neat thing uh that you have you could play the complete library of nes games on your nintendo 64 so let's go ahead and get on out of here and check out a nintendo 64 game okay so like I said, we've got a lot of access to stuff here for Nintendo 64. We can play prototypes, disk drive games, homebrews, translations, all sorts of stuff. And I think that's what makes these kind of devices awesome is the access we get to be able to use things like that on our original hardware. But let's take a look at a Nintendo 64 game before we go. So Mario 64, if we hit the A button, you could select and start or select only. Select only just it selects that game for you to do various things like your your IPS or APS patching. If you want to manually do each game, you can do it that way. Uh, your cheats, you can go ahead and put in your Game Shark cheats here uh, manually. You can also do them via text files. I haven't messed with that. I don't really use Game Shark codes for any of my games, but you do have that feature on this EverDrive, so that's really cool. 
Now, if we just select and start, loads up the game and we get into it. So really awesome. You know, at one point I used to collect Nintendo 64 games. I've downsized my collection quite a bit just because, I mean, there's a lot of games for the system that just really hold no value to me that I would never play. And to have an EverDrive to replace that, I own a ton of games, you know, all the games that I'd want to play, including, you know, Mario 64. Uh, for me, the value comes in and to playing that stuff that there is no access to, uh, you know, on original hardware, playing those hacks, those homebrews, translations of games that never came out over here. That's what I use my EverDrives for the most. But hey, if there's a game I'm like, you know what, I've never played this, let me check it out. A lot of times I will use my flashcards to play a game that was originally released to see if it's something I do want to add to my collection. So, you know, no hate on anybody how you want to use a flash cart. Play the whole released original library if you so choose. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, use it to test things out. Use it to play homebrews and hacks. There are options there. There's tons of stuff you could do with these devices, and I think it's really awesome. Um, and with the Nintendo 64, you know, it does have a pretty cool library of games, a lot of classics. There's a lot of cool things we could do with those games on the system, you know, and being able to play them through an EverDrive or playing hacked versions is really sweet, in my opinion. Now, the one thing I always have to mention before we go on a video like this, as this device was sent to me from Crix for purpose of review and testing and all that. I've had it for quite a while now, um, but it's just now available to the public. So that's why I'm doing my video now. Um, but... I always have to talk about, would have I purchased this if it wasn't sent to me? And the answer to that's kind of different in this situation, uh, because I do love flashcards, and I've already purchased the version 3 flashcard, which costs the same as the X7. Uh, like I said, the V3 no longer is being made, so the X7 replaces it. If I didn't have the V3, yes, I would have purchased this myself. Um, for some people, you know, they may want to upgrade from the version two. I wouldn't say it's worth upgrading from the version three if you already have one. Um, like I said, there's a few quality of life improvements, which is definitely nice to have, but it's not necessary. There's no reason to spend the money again. Um, if you're looking to upgrade from a V2, sure, why not? If you're looking to get an EverDrive for your Nintendo 64, some kind of flash cart, I could highly recommend the X7 and the features that it has. You're just going to have to justify it. You know, the price point does cost slightly under $200, whereas the version 2.5, currently the listings I've seen them going for, it's a little bit over $100. Um, so you have to keep that stuff in mind. Uh, the main difference between the two is with the version 2, 2.5, you will have to reset your system to save your game. You don't have the real-time clock, which is really mostly useful for Animal Crossing. Um, so keep that stuff in mind when deciding which version is best for you. I like having the X7 or the V3 just because it has the best compatibility. I could do all that stuff that I want to. The real-time clock is nice to be able to, you know, play Animal Crossing. Really neat to play the English translated version of that. And hey, I, I like not having to reset my system to save my games. I always look at the options with the EverDrives um, because a lot of times there'll be a version for whatever system where you have to reset to save or there'll be a another version where you don't and it'll have like some additional features so just wanted to share this with you guys give you guys as much information as possible especially if you're in the market for something like this uh try to give you everything you would need to know so you can you know have an understanding and expectation of what you're getting yourself into so really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and with that said I will catch y'all next time. Just like this fool just caught me. Peace out. Bye-bye, Sam. Boom. Bye.